Chalazion surgery can be an option if you have had a Chalazion or sty that simply will not go away. If you're wondering about how to decide about having this surgery and what the steps of the surgery look like, then stick around because in this video, we are gonna talk about the reasons that people may have to have Chalazion surgery as well as the process of getting it done. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Sian Agori. I'm a board certified ophthalmologist and you're watching the ifax.com channel. Remember that this video is for educational purposes only, so for personalized medical advice, be sure to talk to your ophthalmologist. So first, let's talk about a chalazion. A chalazion is a common eyelid condition, and it looks like a smooth lump. It can happen on the upper eyelid, it can happen on the lower eyelid, and it's usually caused by a blocked oil gland. There's actually another video on this channel all about clogged meibomian glands, so you can check that out if you're interested in that information. So should you get surgery for your chalazion? Now, most chalazions will go away with conservative treatments, but some chalazia, unfortunately, do become persistent and troublesome. So now let's break down why people may choose to have surgery for their chalazion or why a doctor may even recommend that it gets done. So the first reason that you may consider wanting to get surgery done for your chalazion is that the chalazion has been there for several months or maybe even almost a year and you have been treating it aggressively. Now that's the key. If you haven't been treating it aggressively, then maybe you haven't really given it a true shot at getting better through conservative treatments. This means doing the warm compresses, cleaning the eyelids appropriately. And I would actually recommend that my patients do their warm compresses six to eight times a day for at least five to seven minutes each time. And that is a very, very difficult thing to do. So a lot of patients really can't do that. Now, in addition to the warm compresses, I tell patients to not use a towel because it gets really hot and cold quickly. So you need to really purchase one of those heat masks online that really are specially designed to deliver moist heat for a longer period of time. It also makes it easier to commit to the treatment by putting it in the microwave. It's just really simple. You just put it in the microwave for a few seconds and then you're able to apply it to your face um, for several minutes. And also you wanna make sure that after you're doing that, you're doing the soapy eye wash. Now, you can consider using a lid cleansing wipe as well, but sometimes those can be very astringent and harsh, so you maybe only wanna use those once a day. So now, if you're telling me that you have done all of these things and you've been really consistent and you have not seen much improvement, then that is a strong reason for me to refer you to an oculoplastic surgeon to have the surgery done. Now, another reason to consider surgery is when the chalazion is extremely large. And when you have a really large chalazion, it can actually affect your vision. It can make the eyelid really heavy, it can reduce your visual field, and large chalazion can also press against the cornea, which can potentially cause astigmatism. In this case, because it's a chalazion causing the pressure, it would be a temporary distortion, but you certainly don't want to have to get a new pair of glasses just to accommodate the pressure that's being put on your eye from the chalazion. Now, astigmatism will often improve if it's being caused by the chalazion, but that's a good reason to consider surgical removal if it is just so large. Now, another reason patients may want to have their chalazion surgically removed is if they are getting frequent chalazion in the same exact spot or the same area. This could mean that there's a chronic blockage and surgery may be recommended by your eye doctor to avoid ongoing issues. Also, in rare cases, what looks like a chalazion could be something more harmful, like an insidious cancer that is just masquerading as a chalazion. And so in that case, we may wanna remove the chalazion so that we can actually get a biopsy of the tissue to make sure that it is in fact a chalazion and not some kind of skin cancer. Now let's talk about how chalazion surgery works. If you're an adult, then the surgery is considered a minor outpatient procedure and it's typically done inside the doctor's office. For children that need chalazions removed, they typically will need anesthesia, so it's often not able to be done inside the doctor's office. So once you are in the doctor's office, you will first get a numbing drop inside the eye to make your eye comfortable, and then a protective contact lens will be placed over the eye. This type of lens is different than the contact lenses we wear to see. And then after that lens is placed, additional numbing medication is usually given around the eyelid in the area of the chalazion itself. Now, in most cases, the eyelid will be flipped and then the chalazion is removed from the inside. 
This is so that there's no visible scar on the outside of your eyelid. In some cases, they may need to do an outer approach, but this really depends on the surgeon, their surgical technique, as well as how big the chalazion is and where exactly it's located. After the surgery, you are likely going to have some mild bruising and swelling, so it's not like that is just gonna be a smooth area, but it should recover within a few days, and then you can return to your normal activities within a day or two. So if you have a chalazion that keeps coming back or is unusually large, or you're concerned that it could be something more serious, be sure to talk to your ophthalmologist about having surgery for it. Hope you found this helpful. Remember to hit the like and subscribe button below, and I'll see you in the next video.